There's an overlooked archaeology, an archaeology of place, both past and present throughout our communities. These are the places that make their way into our daily lives and our contemporary cultural landscape with little or no notice. The result is a blending of old and new places into the into the day-to-day -day lives. Such examples are all around us. Take, take, for example, the boundary walls across the landscape throughout New England. At one time, these walls served the purpose of defining property lines. Today, as part of the cultural landscape, they, they define an entire region of the United States, bringing with them memories of times past. As communities in the present, these places define who we are. These are static cultural markers defined by a moment in time long gone, juxtaposed to our contemporary time. Like people, places too have a life history. This history can be short or long. The times and culture around these places will change, and the places themselves will also be altered. However, all of this noise are the meaning and memories that places hold. Places are a bridge to our collective past, their significance, and their need for preservation is that without these relics, we'd have little or no sense of where we've come from. I'm here today to ask you to rethink the places within your community. To kind of reconnect with your past. There are three ways to go about this. One, acknowledge that places are real and they hold on to the memories and meanings of years past. Recognize that places are impermanent and they reflect the constant change that is part of the human experience. Three, realize that although places may change just below the surface, of a multitude of stories waiting to be told. It's these stories which enhance our communities and define who we are. So first we need to acknowledge that places are real and they hold on to the memories and meanings of years past. So what do I mean by place? In archeological theory, a place is something that is multi-layered. It's connected to our experiences as humans, the daily practices we partake in, our collective memories. Places are also culturally specific and hold bodies of knowledge. In short, these are the special corners of the world that have cultural significance both personally and collectively. So two years ago, I moved back to the United States after living abroad, working in Norway. <clears throat> so I needed a job. It's tough to find a job as an archaeologist. So I was lucky enough to find a job as a carpenter. Uh, much of what we did involved demolition and remodeling. So through this work of teardown, we oftentimes came across signs of work done years or decades earlier. The act of tearing down interior and exterior walls would reveal old doorways and windows long covered over. Even the occasional artifact was recovered from inside walls or under floorboards, giving us a relative date of when the previous work was completed. At some point, I realized that carpentry was kind of like archaeology, and that we were unknowingly uncovering the history of the house, a dwelling place that someone called home. We could see how it had changed over the years, either expanded or contracted. We recovered artifacts that offered us clues to the past lives of those who previously lived in these places. And on one, more than one occasion, we uncovered the building techniques and methods that people had used. And from that information, we could decipher the competency level of the craftsmanship. Ultimately, these findings allowed us to understand those who once lived and worked in this place. Suddenly, with this knowledge, these places took on a new significance because these were real people leaving us clues of who they were. As an archaeologist, carpentry showed me what I was missing in my work, connecting people to places. I spent years excavating sites from the Stone Age to the early modern period, carefully uncovering 
the layers of deposition, rec recovering artifacts. But it's only when I made this connection between place and people did archaeology and the places I was working at take on greater significance and meaning. Second, we need to recognize that places are impermanent and reflect the constant change that is part of the human experience. These places we inhabit or the places we are drawn to or labor at, at some point in time, will fall out of use. Thus, there's this impermanence to these places we are connected to. Even though the materiality of things and the landscapes may appear in the moment to be static, the fact is they are not. As time moves forward, there are mechanical and chemical processes, both literally and figuratively, working against the things and landscapes we create. Ceilings collapse, soils move, walls crumble, Items of various usefulness get scattered and new structures are built. All these processes encapsulate the natural evolution to the creation of an archaeological site. One of my most memorable excavations took place on the Arctic island of Senja in Norway. It was here I was recovering the remains of an early medieval house. The wooden floors and posts were nearly intact, detailing the craftsmanship. The hearth area was well maintained with flat stones surrounding it. The artifacts recovered from under the floorboards were similar to the modern day equivalent. You had gaming pieces, glass beads, bone combs, spindle rolls, all pointed to the daily activities of the people that lived here. This was a family. They had their own gardens, they fished the local fjords, they collected wool from their sheep. And in the dark evenings, of the Arctic winter, they sat around their hearth playing games and telling stories. This place was a home to them. And for us in the modern day, it is a connection to domestic life a thousand years ago. Third, we need to realize that although places may change, just below the surface lie the multitude of stories waiting to be told. It's these stories which enhance our communities and define who we are. This is an excavation that I just recently returned from on the southwest coast of Norway. This is about 3,000 years old site with farming. What we had was farming houses and farming areas, and then on top of that were later on their grave mounds. And for the local community, this is kind of a resurgence of, of connecting with their local heritage that they had lost before. As an archaeologist, my job is to identify and record the process of decay while simultaneously uncovering the story of place, giving it meaning and a voice. An archaeological analysis attempts to tell a story of place and put it into a temporal context. In the storytelling process, a place becomes more than a collection of artifacts or broken down buildings or abandoned fields. This is where people's identities were formed. It's where a trade or a craft was practiced, was learned and practiced. It was a sacred spot on the planet where people imparted knowledge and wisdom to others. It is through this archaeological lens that a place takes on a new meaning and can be incorporated into the human story. At the local level, these places can change the way we view our communities and ourselves. Although the places and people are gone, their stories remain. It's these stories that allow us to see where we have been and where we are going. My goal for this presentation was to get you to re-examine your community and your own sense of place. Places are real. We are held tightly to places, especially places of significance, like where we are born. Places are also impermanent, but hidden away in the matrix of time are the hybridized collection of things, memories, and practices that define these places. The places themselves might be forever gone, but what they have imparted to us stays within the fabric of our communities. Thank you.